Hey guys, so I'm back here with the Honda Shoma 21. This is yet again another Celeron M34 powered uh, laptop in my quest to try and find the best one out of China. Now this thing, straight up, spoilers here, came very close to being the best, what I would call a, an Ultrabook super portable notebook because it's really light. This only weighs 1.09 kilos and it is under 13 millimeters thin, so really portable. Now, just to quickly summarize here, it has one deal breaker that I think a lot of people are gonna be put off by. If you've seen my unboxing video, that none of the ports on it include an audio 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It's got type C, and as soon as you plug anything in type C, it will automatically divert all the audio output to that port and that also means the speakers will stop working so if you want to listen to audio and then charge at the same time you can't which is absolutely crazy that a machine like this has that kind of design flaw so let's check it out here in greater detail go over the design benchmarks a little bit of gaming performance battery life all of that is going to be covered in this review you can see some time codes that should be popping up on this side or that side if i get it right one of these days the build of the laptop is really good. It's all made out of this alloy, just like the Civil Top Air or the T-Book Air that I looked at. The top of the lid, if you've seen the unboxing, I've already covered this, that it doesn't have any flex there. It feels quite solid, so I don't believe that the lid of it is going to press in and have the screen press up against the keyboard and be damaged. The underside is also all made out of metal, and there's a little slot here that you just need to undo two screws in order to install an SSD. If you want to find out how to do that, just check out my unboxing video. On the left side of the Shoma 21, there is a USB 3 port. Now, this is actually a USB 2 port in my testing. It will not run at full USB 3 speeds, but limited to USB 2 speeds there. The micro SD card slot, as you can see, the card that I've got in there at the moment is actually fully inserted. So it sticks out and protrudes by about two millimeters, and it did actually come undone, well, click out, in my bag like this a couple of times. So there is a risk of losing micro SD cards, I feel, because it doesn't sit right in nice and flush. And on the right, the second USB 3 port. Now this one will work at full USB 3 speeds. However, I've noticed that with external hard drives, now and then it will disconnect and it's not working 100% perfect all the time with hard drives, but with flash drives, it's perfectly fine. HDMI out there which works up to 4K 30 Hertz and then the type C port which is audio out and charging now I've connected up a 3.5 millimeter to type C adapter and the audio output from it does sound very clear there's no static or hiss to be expected being digital but I feel it's a bad design choice not to have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this laptop at all. That is missing. There always seems to be something with these Chinese devices. The keyboard isn't a full sized one, but it is good to type on. It's got good key travel of about 1.3 millimeters and a nice feedback from the individual keys there. There are media shortcuts, but it does lack shortcuts for the screen brightness controls. On to very wisely move the power button above the keyboard and not in the place of the delete key, which we often see. So there's no accidental putting the laptop into sleep like some models. Now right above here you can see these two little dots. Those are the microphones there. So due to their location, they do pick up noise and feedback from the keyboard if you happen to be in a Skype call and chatting using the keyboard. Our front facing webcam is two megapixels. Now when you use the Windows webcam camera application, the video quality is about 15 frames per second if you see my unboxing, but I've noticed that in Skype calls, it does work in 720p 30 frames per second and the quality is okay as long as you're in good light. Well, it's not a huge touchpad. I find it works well. We've got two finger scrolling. The sensitivity is okay. It is not a precision one, so you cannot disable the gestures on there without a registry hack. Now you'll notice that on the right side here, we've got that little square there. That is a Elan brand fingerprint reader. So you can unlock it just using your finger and it works quite quickly using Windows Hello. And I haven't had any issues with it. It's accurate, it's fast, it does the job. The screen Onda used is a 12.5 inch 1080p IPS panel 
Maximum brightness is 430 lux, which is very good considering the fact that it does have a matte coated anti-glare cover over the whole top of the screen. I've got nothing but praise for this screen really. It is really good, a very nice panel that they have used. Really good colors, deep blacks, no complaints with it whatsoever. Fantastic screen. And out of the box, the calibration of the white seems to be pretty much spot on. The Shoma 21 is powered by the Intel Celeron N3450. It's otherwise known as the Apollo Lake chipset. Now this is the one that replaced the much slower Atom Cherry Trails. So we have four gigabytes of RAM running at 1600 megahertz. It is fully activated, Windows 10, no problems with the activation, unlike the Civil Top Air or the T-Book Air that I reviewed, which only used a temporary license, so you had to supply your own, which was, of course, not great at all. We never want to have to do that. So wireless is the Intel Dual Band Wireless AC3165 with good performance. I'll show you a benchmark of that in a second. And then the Toshiba 064G30 is our... EMMC, which is the default configuration. I recommend going with an SSD if you want to get better performance. Now it is a EMMC 4.5 spec drive and not EMMC 5, which is the faster ones that we typically see on the Apollo Lakes. So here are the speeds of it. You can see it's not actually too bad for EMMC 4.5 spec. Good sequential writes there and very good sequential write 4Ks, random 4Ks. So not too bad considering. I also benchmarked my internal SSD that I have now, which I'm using at the moment. It's a Transcend 256 gigabyte one, and those are the speeds there, which are pretty much the maximum that this particular SSD can do. So there's no limitations on the SATA 3 port. The micro USB card reader is unfortunately, like most, wired up via a USB 2 hub, so these speeds are limited there. We cannot get the high capacity or the high speed cards at the maximum performance out of them. This is the Geekbench 4 score. Great speeds here for an Apollo Lake N3450. No complaints whatsoever. Very good. It does feel quick and snappy. Windows, the overall performance. Now it can play and stream 4K video in Edge. It can play 4K H2.65 codec natively and also VP9 natively without any issues, even high bit rates if you're running off the internal SSD slot. So here are the wireless speeds. Very good speeds here. Now the range of it seems to be good, but I wouldn't class it as being the best I have seen, probably because of the all metal housing. It depends on what way you have the screen facing you the kind of speeds you're gonna get out the further you get away from your wireless router. So in general use, it's quite fine, the Apollo Lake. I find this is perfect for people that just want to do light things. So internet use, watching videos, documents, stuff like that, in anything that's light. Now you wouldn't be editing videos on this, you won't be playing um, top tier grade A games on this from 2017. It isn't designed for that. You can see the start menu pops in quite well. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is some of the Apollo Lakes had quite a bit of lag when doing that, but not the case here. Windows Edge still has that animation lag, you can see. It's a little bit sort of stuttery the way it maximizes, which isn't the greatest. Now, I've got a few tabs open in Chrome. Now, I like to run normally around five or six, and there really isn't any problem switching between them, you can see. Now, the two-finger scrolling, let's have a look at that is very smooth, even in Chrome here. Now in Edge it's smoother and slightly better, but I find that performance to be very good, acceptable, and even demanding websites that have a lot of images, really not a problem at all. You can see there, that's smooth. Now one thing that doesn't work on the touchpad is the pinch to zoom for some reason, does not seem to be enabled, and neither does that annoying minimize and maximize gesture, which I'm glad they have that disabled. So getting in and around it and using it, I find the performance is really quite good. Now let's load up here now an image, just an edit here for some of my thumbnails in Photoshop. So let's have a look and see how fast it's gonna to take to load up. Now bear in mind, I'm loading this off my SSD and not the default included storage, which is the 64 gigabyte eMMC, which would be a little bit slower, but not that much. 
So you can see it has loaded up, but it's gonna take a little while for things to all pop in. Now it can do these basic image edits just fine, but the more filters you start to apply, the more larger images, the slower things are gonna get. You can see I can move around. That image is not very high resolution at all, and it handles that fine but I wouldn't do anything too complicated on the Apollo Lake. You also have to bear in mind that we've got four gigabytes of RAM to play with. So once you go over that, there will be some SSD swapping happening to stop you getting those low RAM warnings. So here's a quick 4K demo. It's running this. This is shot on a Samsung Galaxy Note and it's running it perfectly fine. There is no problems. You can skip ahead, no lag. A great screen too for watching video and just general content because it is anti-glare we don't have all those annoying reflections. Now there's a bit of a funny analyzing effect happening on this screen. You don't see that in person, it's just on camera and it's to do with the anti-glare coating I feel on the screen. So this is another area here where the Shoma 21 really shines. This is battery life. So in my test here I ran Chrome with about 6 or 7 tabs open. I was listening to a little bit of music using the Type-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter I have, and sometimes just the speakers by themselves. In WordPress editing, I did a whole day's work on this and I managed to get eight hours and 26 minutes, and I still had 15% left. Now your mileage is gonna vary, it's always gonna depend on how close you are to your wireless router. During this test, I was very close to it, so the signal strength would probably be a lot lower the power consumption but really this is the best result I have seen doing similar tests I can normally get around seven to seven and a half on other Apollo lakes but for some reason some of the power saving features they have enabled with the screen like the self refresh and things really helps here so very good now charge times if you can see just down here we're looking at around three and a half hours to fully charge it when on now if you power it off that brings down the charge time to about three hours in my testing. So it is very quick to charge too. Now the audio is by far the most disappointing part of this notebook and a real deal break as I pointed out, there's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to start with, but the speakers also have this annoying hiss over them with whenever any sound is played, you will hear constantly this noise emanating from it, which I find to be distracting. So let's have a listen to how loud the speakers sound. So they completely lack any bass. There's just mids and treble and the volume at 100% does distort. So they're not great. And when you plug in the charger, the audio will cut out completely, which is just the deal break. It's so stupid. You cannot charge and listen to audio at the same time. So I'm going to test out a few games now, but before I do that, I want to show you here the setting that I believe is related and directly linked to the increased GPU performance we're seeing on this particular model and the Civil Top Air, why they are the fastest by about 30 to 40% frames per second more than other Apollo lakes. So not all Apollo lakes are the same down to BIOS or RAM speeds or settings the way they've configured things. But I believe it's related to this. So I found here that it has the power limit one disabled. Now if yours is enabled, just disable that here to get the maximum performance here. What this allows is the CPU to consume more power than it normally would with those enabled, those limits. So the internal graphics, the integrated GPU, will end up clocking higher speeds and perform a lot better and consume more power. Now this will probably generate more heat. On other laptops, this option is disabled like the Chewy Lapbook 14.1 or the 12.3. And having this disabled, I feel is the best way to go that hopefully most manufacturers are going to go with the setting and let us get the maximum performance we can out of the little Apollo Lake. And another thing that I always do here for gaming is to make sure you go into the Intel HD graphics control panel and where it says global settings, make sure this is disabled here, the extended battery life for gaming because having that enabled, which is set by default, will lower the GPU performance. 
So here we have Counter-Strike at 800 times 600 resolution. This is on the lowest settings. And the frame rate's a lot better than what I've seen on other Apollo Lakes, like the Chewy Lapbook 12.3. Around 40 to 50 frames per second. The server has around 16 players on there, I think, at the moment. So all in all, it's not actually doing too bad and definitely one of the better ones. Not quite as fast as the Civil Top Air, however. Older titles like Half-Life 2 can run in 1080p, so the native screen resolution with playable frame rates. But you will see the occasional little frame dip now and there that will drop down to about 30 frames per second. And lastly, League of Legends, 1080p lowest visual settings is running perfectly fine, over 60 frames per second with this bot match here. So I've got two bots on the opposition and one on my side. So temperatures top out at 81 degrees after 30 minutes of gaming. Now I did test it with one hour of gaming and charging at the same time. The maximum temperature was 83 degrees, which is still perfectly fine. There is no thermal throttling. It does get quite hot, the case just around the right side where the power button is and underneath to 38 degrees, so quite warm to the touch. But that's to be expected for a fanless laptop. So there we have it, what could have been perhaps the best portable tiny 12.5 inch laptop turned out to be mediocre with that huge deal breaker when it comes to the audio. The fact that when you need to charge, you can't listen to anything no output from the speakers there. Unless, of course, I'm just being a little bit blind here and I can't find the proper settings, but I've gone through it over and over again and I see no way to do that. Maybe there is an adapter you can plug in that allow us to charge and have audio out at the same time. Still don't like their design choice on this though. They should have just given us a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and then DC in for charging wouldn't have been a problem, I feel. If they had to make a compromise there, they could have just drop that type C port. Besides that, battery life is really good. Big thumbs up there. It can get about eight hours, depending on your brightness setting and what you're doing, of course. Gaming performance, we're seeing yet again that the integrated GPU, the Intel 500 HD, is performing really well, better than literally 80% or 90% of all the other Apollo Lakes out there because they have done some tweaks in the BIOS. They have disabled the power limits in there, allowing the the CPU really to stretch its legs, consume all the power it wants, but it doesn't seem to really affect the battery life. So I don't know why other manufacturers aren't doing what these guys are doing, allowing us to really maximize the performance of the Apollo Lake. So overall, with the touchpad, it's decent. The fingerprint unlo unlocking is good, but I personally would not buy this one here because of that deal breaker when it comes to the audio. Thanks a lot for watching this review and I hope to see you back in the channel shortly with more up and coming reviews.